Hello and welcome to Zing Somerset's Food for Thought. In this episode, we're discussing processed food. What's it all about? Over the next five minutes, we'll discuss what processed food is, why it can be unhealthy, and how we can make changes in our diet to reduce the amount we eat. So what is processed food? Well, food becomes processed when it has been modified, either chemically or physically, to make it into something different or to preserve it. Processed foods often have multiple ingredients and can require a lot of packaging, usually plastic. By that definition, a lot of the foods we eat are processed. For example, tinned fruit is chopped, it's mixed with juice and then it's canned to preserve it. And technically, this is processing. Cheese is made from milk, which has been processed with enzymes. But these are examples of minimal processing. The fruit does still look like fruit and cheese is simply the separation of the constituents of milk. And therefore we do not consider these to fall under the usual definition of processed food. What we're referring to are the highly processed items, which can also be referred to as ultra processed foods. So we're talking about things like sausages. Now these are usually made from pork, but the pork doesn't look like it does when it's simply cut by a butcher. It's been highly processed, mixed with other ingredients to create the final product. Breakfast cereals are often made from oat, wheat and barley grains, but they are processed and added to flavourings and sugar to create a cereal that looks nothing like the original grains. So let's take a closer look at cheese. So plain cheese such as cheddar is minimally processed. It is simply a product of milk. And if you look at the ingredients lists on a block of plain cheddar, it will simply list milk and salt. On the other hand, cheese can be highly processed such as these cheese singles generally designed for burgers, things like that, and individually wrapped in plastic. These contain lots of additives and they've completely changed the ordinary structure of cheese by adding um, emulsifiers, preservatives and flavourings. So why is it a problem? Well, processed foods often contain lots of sugar, salt and saturated fat. And the act of processing often removes lots of nutrients from the foods, such as fibre. So in general, processed foods are very high in calories, but low in their nutritional value. Now remember, foods can be high in calories and high in nutritional value, but those tend to be whole foods, not processed ones. So processed foods are also high in additives, such as E-numbers, emulsifiers and chemical preservatives. These are all safe for consumption. They are not going to harm you. But not being harmful is not the same as being good for you. And let's face it, most of us eat far too much processed food. It's so much quicker and easier to grab something ready-made in a life where we're rushing around and it tastes good and it tastes good for a reason. The sugar, salt and fat combination triggers a pleasure response in our brain, which is why we crave it so much. The problem is that eating too much high calorie processed food can contribute to consuming too many calories overall, which can lead to weight gain. And because processed foods have low nutritional value, you can miss out on important nutrients that we need for good health so how can we try to eat less of it? Well, first of all, I'd recommend swapping out processed foods for their whole unprocessed alternatives. For example, breakfast cereal can be swapped for oats or porridge or shredded whole wheat cereal. Biscuits can be swapped for rice cakes or pieces of fruit. Salami and other processed sandwich meats can be swapped for slices of cooked chicken or turkey. And jars and packets of sauces can be swapped for tinned tomatoes cooked with vegetables and herbs. It's a good idea to start trying to prepare more food at home from scratch. 
So making your own lunch rather than buying it out. Cooking more meals at home rather than buying takeaways or ready meals, including pizzas and pies to go in the oven. And aim to use more whole foods, so buying pieces of fruit, vegetables, potatoes, whole grains such as oats and brown rice, unprocessed meats and eggs. It's a really good idea to start with a few small changes. Don't try to cut it all out at once. This can feel overwhelming and lead to feelings of failure. Gradually swap out processed foods for real ingredients and try checking the ingredients list to find out what's really in your food. Our take home messages are that most of us eat too many processed foods on a regular basis and it's important to know that no single person is fighting this battle alone. They're often very high in calorie with low nutritional value and this can contribute to weight gain and poor health. Aim to prepare your own food more often using whole unprocessed ingredients which will help you cut down on your intake of processed foods.